Once in a quiet suburban town, a group of curious teenagers gathered for a night of supernatural exploration. Among them were Sarah, Chris, and Emily. They had heard chilling tales of Bloody Mary and Charlie Charlie, and they couldn't resist the temptation to summon the spirits. As the clock neared midnight, the anticipation among the group of teenagers reached its zenith. They had assembled in Emily's dimly lit basement, where time seemed to slow and shadows loomed like ancient sentinels guarding the secrets of the night. Twin mirrors adorned the walls, their surfaces polished to an eerie sheen. The air grew heavy with the weight of the unknown as they prepared to summon the spirits that dwelled in the realm beyond. With an eerie synchronicity, they began to chant, their voices trembling in unison. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Each repetition of the name seemed to send ripples through the room, and for a moment, it appeared as if the very foundation of reality trembled in response. Yet, despite the unsettling tension that hung in the air, nothing happened. Undeterred by the initial lack of response, their curiosity and bravado pushed them forward. Turning their attention to the two mirrors that flanked the room, they devised a plan to reach beyond the veil that separated the living from the spirit world. On a piece of paper, they inscribed the words, Yes and No, laying it between the twin mirrors as a makeshift conduit to the unknown. With trembling hands, they positioned two pencils atop the paper, aligning them in the iconic Charlie Charlie grid. The pencils, normally innocuous writing instruments, took on an aura of foreboding significance. It was as if they had become the antennae of a spectral radio, tuned to the frequencies of the supernatural. In the flickering candlelight, their breaths held in anticipation. They posed their questions, feeling the tension in the room grow palpable. The very atmosphere seemed to thicken, and the basement became a crucible where the mundane and the otherworldly converged. Little did they know that this seemingly innocuous experiment would unleash forces far beyond their understanding setting in motion a series of events that would plunge them into a nightmarish descent into the unknown. In hushed voices that barely rose above a whisper, the group of teenagers, their eyes wide with anticipation and trepidation, ventured further into the enigmatic realm they had entered. With trembling hands, they gathered around the makeshift Charlie Charlie grid, the dimly lit basement serving as a backdrop to their daring experiment. In barely audible tones, they asked the question that hung heavy in the air. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? Their breaths seemed to hang suspended as they waited for a response. Seconds stretched into an eternity, and the pencils poised delicately atop the paper grid remained unmoved. The room clung to an eerie stillness. Undeterred by the initial lack of response, they repeated the question their voices tinged with urgency and a touch of anxiety. It was then, in that breathless moment, that something inexplicable occurred. One of the pencils, as if guided by an unseen hand, shifted ever so slightly, its tip coming to rest upon the word, yes. Chills raced down their spines as the realization settled upon them. They had made contact with a presence beyond their understanding. It was a connection to a realm that existed just beyond the veil of their ordinary lives, a realm inhabited by spirits and entities whose motives and intentions remained shrouded in mystery. Emily, her voice quivering, dared to inquire further, Charlie, are you a friendly spirit? The room seemed to hold its breath as the pencils hesitated, their movement deliberate and calculated. Then, letter by letter, they spelled out the word N-O, Panic swept through the room like wildfire, spreading from heart to heart. The revelation that they had summoned a malevolent spirit sent shivers racing along their spines. They exchanged nervous glances, the gravity of their situation sinking in. They had ventured into a realm of shadows, and the darkness they had awakened was beginning to stir, its intentions unknown and its power growing with each passing moment. Fear gripped the hearts of the teenagers as the malevolent entity they had unwittingly summoned revealed its hostile nature. Sarah, her voice quivering with desperation, took the lead, her words a trembling plea. 
Charlie, we're sorry. We didn't mean to disturb you. Please, leave us be. Her voice seemed to hang in the air, a fragile plea for mercy in the face of an unknown and malevolent force. The pencils, as if responding to her entreaty, slowly slid back to the word, Yes. A collective sigh of relief swept through the room, but it was a relief tinged with unease. An unsettling silence now permeated the basement, as if the malevolent entity, having been acknowledged and apologized to, was biding its time, observing them with an unseen gaze. As minutes ticked by, the atmosphere in the basement grew colder, and shadows danced on the walls with a sinister elegance. The oppressive sense of being watched weighed heavily on them, and they began to prepare to leave, a unanimous decision born of a growing dread. It was then that Emily, her curiosity piqued despite the looming threat, glanced into one of the mirrors. What she saw in that reflection would haunt her nightmares for the rest of her life. Her own reflection, instead of mirroring her fearful expression, wore a sinister smirk, its eyes filled with malevolence. In a voice that dripped with menace, the reflection whispered, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. The words seemed to echo and reverberate throughout the room, a sinister incantation that defied the boundaries of the possible. Before anyone could react, the basement plunged into a darkness so profound that it seemed to consume not only the room, but their very souls. In the suffocating blackness, their screams went unanswered, and the malevolent spirits that they had summoned with their curiosity and recklessness exacted their revenge with a merciless finality. The basement, once a realm of fascination and experimentation, had become a nightmarish abyss from which there was no escape. The legend of that ill-fated night would forever linger in the town's whispers, a chilling reminder of the consequences of meddling with forces beyond mortal comprehension. In a state of sheer terror, the group of teenagers found themselves trapped in a waking nightmare. As if guided by a malevolent will, the basement door slammed shut with a deafening, finality-shrouded thud. It was as though the very walls of the room had conspired to imprison them in a nightmarish ordeal from which there was no escape. The room seemed to tremble with an otherworldly energy, and eerie echoes of ghostly laughter reverberated through the air. The laughter carried a malevolent glee, a sinister mockery of their desperate pleas for release. Their frantic cries and pounding on the basement door went unanswered, as if the very act of summoning these vengeful spirits had severed their connection to the outside world. As the minutes turned to hours, the mirrors that had once seemed innocuous now took on a nightmarish quality. They began to warp and twist, their reflections revealing gruesome and horrifying visions of death and despair. The room became a twisted gallery of terror, with each mirror reflecting a different gruesome fate, as if the malevolent spirits reveled in tormenting their captives with the darkest recesses of the human psyche. The spirits of Bloody Mary and Charlie Charlie had, in some unholy union, merged into a malevolent force far beyond their individual terrors. It was a force that now held the teenagers in its merciless grip, a force that had been awakened by their reckless curiosity and now sought to exact a revenge that transcended the boundaries of the living world. The room filled with the anguished screams of the trapped teenagers as the malevolent spirits reveled in their torment. Each cry echoed through the basement, a chilling testament to the consequences of their ill-fated summoning. In that suffocating darkness, they had become prisoners of their own curiosity, trapped in a nightmarish purgatory from which there was no escape. Their fate served as a cautionary tale, a chilling reminder to all who heard their story that some doors should remain firmly closed and that the spirits of the other world should never be trifled with, for the price of curiosity could be one's very soul. The following morning dawned with an eerie stillness, a stark contrast to the night of terror that had unfolded in Emily's basement. As the first rays of sunlight filtered through the curtains, casting a gentle glow over the suburban town, Emily's parents awoke to a house that seemed cloaked in an unsettling calm. With a sense of unease gnawing at their hearts, 
they ventured down to the basement, where their daughter and her friends had spent the night in pursuit of the unknown. What they discovered would haunt them for the rest of their lives. As they crossed the threshold into the basement, Emily's parents found no trace of their daughter or her friends. The room was empty, the makeshift Charlie Charlie grid untouched, and the twin mirrors reflected only an abandoned and eerily pristine space. Panic surged through them as they realized that their children had disappeared without a trace. The basement, once a place of curiosity and experimentation, had become an enigma in itself a place where the boundaries of reality and the supernatural blurred, and from which their loved ones had seemingly vanished. In the days that followed, the suburban town buzzed with whispers and speculations. The legend of the Twin Mirrors became a cautionary tale, passed down from generation to generation, serving as a chilling reminder that some doors should remain firmly closed. The tragic fate of Emily and her friends served as a harrowing testament to the consequences of delving too deeply into the unknown, a stark reminder that curiosity, when left unchecked, could lead to a darkness from which there might be no return. The basement, forever haunted by the echoes of that ill-fated night, remained locked and untouched, its secrets buried beneath layers of cautionary folklore. It stood as a silent sentinel, a reminder to all who dare to seek answers beyond the veil of the ordinary that some mysteries were best left unsolved and some doors should never be opened. <laughs>